My name is Arna Pretorius and I'm a 14 year old snake catcher in Northwest part of Stroh. I got my first snake at the age of two. Um, I got a red tail boa, we walked into a pet shop, all technically not walked. I was in a wheelchair and we pushed in and I just went past all the bunnies and I just fell in love with snakes. So my goal with snakes is to educate the public and conserve them so I would remove them from properties and release them back into the wild. We're busy opening a reptile park this year so to educate people more and uh, I'm really just trying to educate the general public on why not to kill them and why they have a very important role in our ecosystem. I think the main reason um, snakes go close to humans and especially in the area we are living in is because of habitat destruction so people are planting stuff for us to eat and that is just kind of destroying their habitat so moving closer to the city to find rodents and water and then they get in conflict with humans unfortunately. Uh, venomous snakes, first of all, the rat population is going to spike totally out of control. We have a living proof of that here in Soweto, where they killed all of the snakes and the rats and the mice population has first of all spiked. The rats have grown this big and they have built an Im immune system for the rat poisons. So at the moment, nothing is killing them. And if we give rats poison, it's, even if we do have snakes, it's not going to stop with the rats. So the owl is going to eat the dead carcass and the owl is going to die as well and then something is going to eat the owl and then that thing is going to die as well. So at the end of the day, it's a whole chain reaction because of poison, because we killed all of the snakes and now we're sitting with the consequences. So I did my first venomous snake handling course at the age of nine. Um, I handled a puff adder and a ring cast that day. Um, they didn't want to allow me to work with the venomous snakes, but my mom filled in indemnity form, so I just did this course. Got 93% that day. And then they told me, okay, they're going to give me a shot with Harmless, and if I do that correctly, they'll give me a shot at the Venomous. So I filled and did the complete course. Then I did another one at the age of 10, 11, and I did another one 2019. So that's a few, like six months ago. I'm going for another one now at Uncle Arne Nudia again. So I, I do this to refresh my mind quite often. Just, yeah, it's good to keep the training going. Um, first of all, venom snakes, it's a dangerous job we're doing, so they have to be cautious, but they do have feelings, so you don't want to break their feelings as well, and you just need to learn to read them. So after a long period of working with venomous snakes, I've been working for the, with them for five years now, you start to get to read them. You, don't, you shouldn't use that as an advantage because snakes, they, their whole aura can change in a few seconds, but when you can read them, you know how to work with that specific snake. and. To, to, to minimize all of the chances of getting bitten. So if that snake stays calm, you stay calm, and yeah, it's probably gonna work out good. Because I've handled mambas, and that snake didn't try to bite or hiss at me once, just because of the way I, I approached it and caught it. You hey guys, here we have a beautiful Cape Cobra, Naja Nivea, Africa's most venomous cobra, with a potently strong neurotoxic venom. There we go. Gorgeous snakes. All of the Cape Cobras always have a black pointy tail, like you'll see there. And as they grow up, they'll lose the black dark band under their throat. This one still has a little bit of it, so I'm assuming this oak is a teenager. Gorgeous little snakes. I'm gonna put the snake down. I wanna do two things at one time. Here we have the snake again. Just to prove snakes would always try and hide first, then attack or bite their prey. Biting is always their last option. You'll see that when I put the snake down and it sees the dark hole, it's just gonna go in there immediately. Trying to hide from me because he is thinking that I am a predator. And the snake is safely and secure. I think I'm more cautious. So there's certain snakes that, okay, I'm see this snake is aggressive. It's angry, I'm gonna have to approach this a different way. So there's always a situation, you can always step back from a situation. If you see that snake is in a dangerous area, you're not going to be able to remove that without knowing you're 100% safe. Mm. Just step back, approach it from a different angle. So, um, not scared, cautious. I am alert on where to step next and what the next move should be. I always think it through, to talk to my dad or my mom, mm. thinking what their opinion or opinions are, because their brains are fully developed. They know all the worst situations that can possibly happen from that snake. So always the best to work it through with an adult, see their opinion. But I don't think you should be scared, just cautious. Um, fear is a learned response. We only get born with the fear to drown and the fear to fall. The rest are all learned, so we can all just get rid of them as well and just be cautious. 
And then another thing I have to be wary of is I have anaphylaxis with cytotoxic and neurotoxic snakes, so I'm allergic to venom. People might find that interesting because anybody is allergic to venom, but it's like a bee sting. Some people take it different than other people. So my biggest problem is spitting snakes, and especially me, I work with run calls every day. So um, what would happen if I get bitten by one, it would attack my whole nervous system, my body will overreact. It's just gonna, it's just a problem on another problem. So we have a big first aid measure in protocol because the chances of me making it from here to the hospital without dying is very slim. So the protocol that we have to follow at home is a huge protocol and it has to be on point. Everything at a certain time should be administered. Um, so the protocols I have to take is I always wear gaiters when I work with Ron Cole. So they come up till here just to minimize the chances of getting bitten here. Always wear long sleeve pants, long sleeve um, jackets or t-shirts, buffs and hats and glasses and gloves of course because I don't want that venom getting on me because I'll get rashes and when I, when I breathe in the venom my, my lung systems I will start getting asthma. So always try and get as less venom on you as possible. Or well, sometimes even a, a visor is better. Um, yeah, that's unfortunately one of the things that I also sit with. I can't even clean a wrinkles cage because my I would immediately go into asthma and have to. This is unpleasant. Yeah. So my mom wasn't keen about that at the beginning. She was like, "Why snakes? You are good at maths. Just go into maths and become a professor." And I was like, "No, no, no. I like snakes and I want to protect Earth. There's no need for more." universities and professors on this planet at the moment we need conservationists um, so I just went for that my dad kind of sketch about it the first time but then he just also fell in love with them when I was three years old I was in cast after another op one of the operations and I would know how to feed my snakes when they bite me so my mom wanted to sell my snakes and I would always use the excuse like it's just hungry um, so I was sitting on the couch and I was watching a movie and my red tail bow just lashed on my here on the side of my hand and was just hanging there and I was like, well, my snake is hungry and she wanted to sell it, but I didn't allow her. And then another one, is, I was in um, Diskem. No, not Diskem, it was Clicks. And we were walking in and I, I put my pet snake here in my t-shirt. And then all of a sudden the thing lashed out and grabbed me on my lip. And it was like hanging there on my lip and her auntie looked around and she passed out. And then she fell over three cabinets and it just went like this just all these cabinets falling and she's passed out on the ground the snakes are hanging on my lip I'm four years old it was one of the funniest situations I've ever had yeah I have a few memories of snakes which those are just two of yeah okay so my plans in the future is we're opening a park very soon now I'm gonna get a bit of an income then I'm, then I'm gonna travel around the world and open a few small parks everything is made out of recycled materials so it doesn't have any impact on the environment so we're trying to keep it uh, environmentally friendly as possible so I'm going to open a few small parks and then one day I'm hoping to open a big park which is going to cover all the continents and when you walk into this continent there's the temperature, the humidity of the continent and everything is just going to be live variants. So I'm trying to make this happen one day and I really hope it does. If it doesn't in my lifetime I hope my kids can take the legacy on. Oh, that's a big one.